Princess Beatrice of the United Kingdom. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Princess Beatrice, Beatrice Mary Victoria Theodore, later Princess Henry of Battenberg, 14th of April 1857, died 26th of October 1944, was a member of the British royal family. She was the fifth daughter and youngest child of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. The current King of Spain, Juan Carlos, is her great grandson. Beatrice's childhood coincided with Victoria's grief following the death of her husband, Prince Albert, on 14th of December 1861. As Beatrice's elder sisters married and left their royal mother, Victoria came to rely on the company of her youngest daughter, whom she called Baby, for most of her childhood. Beatrice, who was brought up to stay with her mother always, soon resigned herself to her fate. Victoria was set against her youngest daughter marrying and refused to discuss the possibility. Nevertheless, many suitors were put forward, including Napoleon Eugene, Princess Imperial, or pr sorry, Prince Imperial, the son of the exiled Emperor Napoleon III of France, and Louis IV, Grand Duke of Hesse, the widower of Beatrice, Beatrice's older sister Alice. Although she was attracted to the Prince Imperial, and there was talk of a possible marriage, he was killed in the Anglo-Zulu War in 1879. Beatrice fell in love with Prince Henry of Battenberg, the son of Prince Alexander of Hesse and by Rhine, and Julia von Hauck, a commoner. After a year of persuasion, Victoria agreed to the marriage, which took place at Whippingham on the Isle of Wight on 23rd of July, 1885. Victoria consented on condition that Beatrice and Henry make their home with her and that Beatrice continue her duties as the Queen's unofficial secretary. Ten years into their marriage, on the 20th of January, 1896, Pen Prince Henry died of malaria while fighting in the Anglo-Asante War. Beatrice remained at her mother's side until Victoria died on the 22nd of January, 1901. Beatrice devoted the next 30 years to editing Queen Victoria's journals as her designated literary executor. She continued to make public appearances after her mother's death and died at the age of 87 on the 26th of October, 1944 outliving all her siblings and several of her children, nieces and nephews. Early Life Beatrice was born on the 14th of April, 1857, at Buckingham Palace. She was the fifth daughter and youngest of nine children of the reigning British monarch, Queen Victoria, and her husband Albert, the Prince Consort. The birth caused controversy when it was announced that Victoria would seek relief from the pains of delivery through the use of chloroform administered by Dr. John Snow. Chloroform was considered dangerous to mother and child and was frowned upon by the Church of England and the medical authorities. Victoria was undeterred and used, quote, that blessed chloroform, unquote, for her last pregnancy. A fortnight later, Victoria reported in her journal, quote, I was amply rewarded and forgot all I had gone through when I had heard dearest Albert say, quote, it's a fine child and a girl. Albert and Victoria chose the names Beatrice Mary Victoria Theodore, Mary after Princess Mary, Duchess of Gloucester, the last surviving child of King George III of the United Kingdom, Victoria after the Queen, and Theodore after Queen's older half-sister. She was christened in the private chapel at Buckingham Palace on the 16th of June, 1857. Her godparents were her maternal grandmother, the Duchess of Kent, her elder sister, the Princess Royal, and the Royal's fiancé, Prince Frederick of Prussia. From birth, Beatrice became a favored child. The elder favorite daughter of Prince Albert, the Princess Royal, was about to take up residence in Germany with her new husband, Frederick Fritz of Prussia. At the same time, the newly arrived Beatrice showed promise. Albert wrote to Augusta, Fritz's mother, that, quote, baby practices her scales like a good prima donna before a performance and has a good voice, unquote. Although Victoria was known to dislike most babies, she liked Beatrice, whom she considered attractive. This provided Beatrice with an advantage over her elder siblings. Victoria once remarked that Beatrice was, quote, a pretty, plump, and flourishing child with fine, large blue eyes, a pretty little mouth, and very fine skin, unquote. Her golden long hair was the focus of paintings commissioned by, by Victoria, who even enjoyed giving Beatrice her bath, in marked contrast to her bathing preferences for her other children. Beatrice showed intelligence, which further endeared her to the prince consort, amused by her childhood pre uh, precociousness. He wrote to Baron Stockmar that Beatrice was, quote, the most amusing baby we have had, unquote. 
Despite sharing the rigorous education program designed by Prince Albert and his close advisor, Baron Stockmar, Beatrice had a more relaxed infancy than her siblings because of her relationship with her parents. By four years young, the youngest uh, and the acknowledged last royal child, Beatrice was not forced to share her parents' attention the way her siblings had, and her amusing ways provided comfort to her faltering father. Victoria's Devoted Companion In March 1861, Victoria's mother, Victoria, Duchess of Kent, died at Frogmore. The Queen broke down in grief and guilt over the estrangement at the beginning of Victoria's reign. Beatrice tried to console her mother by reminding her that the Duchess of Kent was, quote, in heaven, but Beatrice hopes she will return, unquote. This comfort was significant because Victoria had isolated herself from the children except the eldest unmarried, Princess Alice, and Beatrice. Victoria again relied on Beatrice and Alice after the death of Albert on the 14th of December of typhoid fever. The depth of the Queen's grief over the death of her husband surprised her family, courtiers, politicians, and subjects. As when her mother died, she shut herself off from her family, most particularly the Prince of Wales, whom she blamed for her husband's death, with the exception of Alice and Beatrice. Victoria often took Beatrice from her cot, hurried to her bed, and, quote, lay there sleepless, clasping to her child, wrapped in the night clothes of a man who would wear them no more. After 1871, when the last of Beatrice's elder sisters married, Victoria came to rely upon her youngest daughter, who had declared from an early age, quote, I don't like weddings at all. I shall never be married. I shall stay with my mother, unquote. As her mother's secretary, she performed duties such as writing on the Queen's behalf and helping po with political correspondence. These mundane duties mirrored those that had been performed in succession by her sisters, Alice, Helena, and Louise. However, to, the, to these the Queen soon added more personal tasks. During a serious illness in 1871, the Queen dictated her journal entries to Beatrice, and in 1876 she allowed Beatrice to sort the music that she and the Prince Consort had played, unused since his death fifteen years earlier. The devotion that Beatrice showed to her mother was acknowledged in the Queen's letters and journals, but her constant need for Beatrice grew stronger. The Queen suffered another bereavement in 1883 when her Highland servant, John Brown, died at Balmoral. Once again, the Queen plunged into public mourning and relied on Beatrice for support. Unlike her siblings, Beatrice had not shown dislike for Brown, and the two had often been seen in each other's company. They had worked together to carry out the Queen's wishes. Marriage Possible Suitors Although the Queen was set against Beatrice marrying anyone in the expectation that she would uh, always stay at home with her, a number, a number of possible suitors were put forward before Beatrice's marriage to the Prince Henry of Battenberg. One of these was Napoleon Eugene, the French Prince Imperial, son, of, son and heir of the exiled Emperor Napoleon III of France, and his wife, the Empress Eugenie. After Prussia defeated France in the Franco-Prussian War, Napoleon was deposed and moved, to his fa moved his family to England in 1870. After the Emperor's death in 1873, Victoria and Empress Eugenie formed a close attachment, and the newspapers reported the imminent engagement of Beatrice to the Prince Imperial. These rumors ended with the death of the Prince Imperial in the Anglo-Zulu War on the 1st of June 1879. Victoria's journal records their grief, quote, Dear Beatrice, crying very much as I did too, gave me the telegram. It was, a, it was dawning and little sleep did I get. Beatrice is so distressed everyone quite stunned." Unquote. After the death of the Prince Imperial, Beatrice's brother, Alfred uh, Edward, the Prince of Wales, suggested that she marry their sister uh, Alice's widower, Louis IV, the Grand Duke of Hesse, who had lost his wife to diphtheria in 1878. Albert Edward argued that Beatrice could act as a replacement mother for Louis's uh, Louis young children and spend most of her time in England looking after her mother. He further suggested that the Queen could oversee the upbringing of her Hessian grandchildren with greater ease. However, at that time, it was forbidden by law for Beatrice to marry her, uh, her sister's widower. This was countered by the Prince of Wales, who vehemently uh, supported passage by the Houses of Parliament of the deceased wife's sister bill, which would have removed the obstacle. Despite popular support for this measure, and although it passed in the House of Commons, it was rejected by the House of Lords because of opposition from the bishops. Although the Queen was disappointed that the bill had failed, she was happy to keep her daughter at her side. 
Other candidates, including two of Prince Henry's brothers, Prince Alexander, Sandro, and Prince Louis of Battenberg, were put forward to be Beatrice's husband, but they did not succeed. Although Alexander never formally pursued Beatrice, merely claiming that he, quote, might even at one time have become engaged to the friend of my childhood, Beatrice of England, unquote, Louis was more interested. Victoria invited him to dinner, but sat between him and Beatrice, who had been told by the Queen to ignore Louis to discourage his suit. Louis, not realizing for several years the reasons for this silence, married Beatrice's niece, Princess Victoria of Hesse and by Rhine. Although her marriage hopes had been dealt another blow, while attending Louis's wedding at Darmstadt, Beatrice fell in love with Prince Henry, who returned her, her affections. Engagement and Wedding when Beatrice, after returning from Darmstadt, told her mother that she planned to marry, the Queen reacted with frightening silence. Although they, although they remained side by side, the Queen did not talk to her for seven months, instead communicating by note. Victoria's behavior, unexpected even by her family, seemed prompted by the threatened loss of her daughter. The Queen regarded Beatrice as her, quote, baby, unquote, her innocent child, and viewed the physical sex that would come with marriage as an end to innocence. Subtle persuasions by the Princess of Wales and the Crown Princess of Prussia, who reminded her mother of the happiness that Beatrice had brought the Prince Consort, induced the Queen to resume talking to Beatrice. Victoria consented to the marriage on condition that Henry give up his German commitments and live permanently with Beatrice and the Queen. Beatrice and Henry were married at St. Mildred's Church at Whippingham, near Osborne, on 23rd of July, 1885. Beatrice, who wore her mother's wedding veil on uh, of Honiton Lace was escorted by the Queen and Beatrice's eldest brother, the Prince of Wales. The ceremony, which was not attended by her eldest sister and brother-in-law, the Crown Prince and Princess of Prussia, who were detained in Germany, William uh, Ewart Gladstone, or Beatrice's cousin, Princess Mary Adelaide, Duchess of Teck, ended with the couple's departure for their honeymoon at Cor Abbey House, a few miles from Osborne. The Queen, taking leave of them, Quote, bore up bravely till the departure and then fairly gave way, unquote, as she later admitted to the crown princess. Victoria's Late Last Years After a short honeymoon, Beatrice and her husband fulfilled their promise and returned to the queen's side. The queen made it clear that she could not cope on her own and that the couple could not travel without her. Although the queen relaxed its restrictions shortly after the marriage, Beatrice and Henry traveled only to make short visits with his family. Beatrice's love for Henry, like that of the queens for the prince consort, seemed to increase the longer they were longer they were married. When Henry traveled without Beatrice, she seemed happier when he returned. The addition of Prince Henry to the family gave new reasons for Beatrice and the queen to look forward, and the court was brighter than it had been since the prince consort's death. Even so, Henry, supported by Beatrice, was determined to take part in military campaigns, and this annoyed the queen who opposed his participation in life-threatening warfare. Conflicts also arose when Henry attended the Ayakio Carnival and kept, quote, low company, unquote, and Beatrice sent a Royal Navy officer to remove him from temptation. On one occasion, Henry slipped away to Corsica with his brother Louis. The Queen sent a warship to bring him back. Henry was feeling continually oppressed by Victoria's constant need for his and his wife's company. Despite being married... Beatrice fulfilled her promise to the Queen by continuing as her full-time confidant and secretary. Victoria warmed to Henry, as she often did with other handsome, strong men. However, the Queen criticized Beatrice's conduct during her first pregnancy, when Beatrice stopped coming to the Queen's dinners a week before giving birth, preferring to eat alone in her room, the Queen wrote angrily to her physician, Dr. James Reed, that, quote, I urged the princess coming to dinner, and not simply moping in her room, which is very bad for her. In my case, I regularly came to dinner except when I was really unwell, even after when suffering a great deal, up to the very last day, unquote. Beatrice, aided by chloroform, gave birth the following week to her first son, Alexander. Beatrice gave birth to four children. In addition, she had a miscarriage in the early months of her marriage. Alexander, called Drino, was born in 1886, Ina in 1887, Leopold in 1889, and Maurice in 1891. Following this, Beatrice took a polite and encouraging interest in social issues, such as conditions in the coal mines. However, this interest did not extend to changing the conditions of poverty, as it had done with her brother, the Prince of Wales. 
Although court entertainments were few after the prince consort's death, Beatrice and the queen enjoyed tableau vivant photography, which was often performed at many royal residences. Henry, increased, uh, increasingly bored by the lack of activity at court, longed for employment, and in response to this, the queen made him governor of the Isle of Wight in 1889. However, he longed for military adventure and pleaded with his mother-in-law to let him join the Ashanti expedition fighting in the Anglo-Asante War. Despite misgivings, the Queen consented, and Henry and Beatrice parted on 6th of December, 1895. Husband and wife would not meet again. Henry contact contracted malaria and was sent home. On 22nd of January, 1896, Beatrice, who was waiting for her husband at Ma uh, Madeira, uh, received a telegram informing her of Henry's death two days earlier. Devastated, she left court for a month of mourning before returning to her post at her mother's side. The Queen's Journal reports that Victoria, quote, went over to Beatrice's room and sat a while with her. She is so piteous in her misery, unquote. Despite her grief, Beatrice remained her mother's faithful companion, and as Victoria aged, she relied more heavily on Beatrice for dealing with correspondence. However, realizing that Beatrice needed a place of her own, she gave her the Kensington Palace apartments once occupied by the Queen and her mother. In response to Beatrice's interest in photography, the Queen had a darkroom installed at Osborne House. The changes in the family, including Beatrice's preoccupation with her mother, may have affected her children, who rebelled at school. It was discovered that the children's governess had been undermining the love and trust they had in their mother. Beatrice also wrote that Ana was troublesome and rebellious, and that Alexander was telling, quote, unwarrantable untruths, unquote. Later Life Beatrice's life was overturned by the death of Queen Victoria on the 22nd of January, 1901. She wrote to the principal of the University of Glasgow in March, quote, you, may you may imagine what the grief is. I, who had hardly ever been separated from my dear mother, can hardly realize what life would be like without her, who was the center of everything, unquote. Beatrice's public appearances continued, but her position at court was diminished. She, unlike her sister Louise, was not close to her brother, now King Edward the, uh, the Seventh and was not included in the king's inner circle. Nevertheless, though their relationship did not break down completely, it was occasionally strained. For example, when she accidentally but noisily dropped her service book from the royal gallery onto a table of gold plate during his coronation. After inheriting Osborne, the king had his mother's uh, personal photographs and belongings removed and some of them destroyed, especially material relating to John Brown, whom he detested. Victoria had intended the house to be private, secluded, residence for her descendants, away from the pomp and ceremony of mainla mainland life. However, the new king had no need for the house and consulted his lawyers about disposing of it, transforming the main wing into a convalescent home, opening the state apartments to the public, and con uh, constructing a naval college on the grounds. His plans met with strong disapproval from Beatrice and Louise. Victoria had bequeathed them houses on the estate, and the privacy promised, them, promised to them by their mother was threatened. When Edward discussed the fate of the houses with them, Beatrice argued against allowing the house to leave the family, setting its importance to their parents. However, the king did not want the house himself, and he offered it to his heir, Beatrice's nephew George, who declined, objecting to the high cost of maintenance. Edward subsequently extended the grounds of Beatrice's home, Osborne Cottage, to compensate her for the impending loss of her privacy. Shortly afterwards, the king declared to Arthur Balfour, the prime minister, that the main house would go to the nation as a gift. An exception was made for the private apartments, which were closed to all but the royal mem uh, family members, who made it a shrine to their mother's memory. Victoria's Journals Upon Victoria's death, Beatrice began the mo momentous task of transcribing and editing Victoria's journals, which had been kept since 1831. The hundreds of volumes contained the Queen's personal views on the day-to-day -day business of her life, and included personal and family matters as well as matters of state. Victoria had given Beatrice the task of editing the journals for publication, which meant removing private material as well as passages that, if published, might be hurtful to living people. Beatrice deleted so much material that the edited journals are only a third as long as the originals. The destruction of such large passages of Victoria's diaries distressed Beatrice's nephew, King George V, and his wife, Queen Mary, who were, th who were powerless to intervene. Beatrice copied a draft from the original and then copied her draft into a set of blue notebooks. Both the originals and her first drafts were destroyed as she progressed. 
The task took 30 years and was finished in 1931. The surviving Bloob notebooks are kept in the Royal Archives at Windsor Castle. Retirement from Public Life Beatrice continued to appear in public after her mother's death. The public engagements she carried out were often related to her mother, Victoria, as the public had always associated Beatrice with their lost queen. The beauty of Beatrice's daughter, Ina, was known throughout Europe, and despite her low rank, she was uh, a desirable bride. Her choice of marriage partner was King Alfonso VIII of Spain. However, the marriage caused controversy in Britain since it required Ina to convert to Roman Catholicism. This step was opposed by Beatrice's brother, King Edward VII, and Spanish ultra-conservatives opposed their king's marriage to a Protestant of low birth. Nevertheless, Alfonso and Ana were married on the 31st of May, 1906. The marriage began inauspiciously when an anarchist attempted to bomb them on their wedding day. Apparently close at first, the couple drew apart. Ana became unpopular in Spain and grew more so when it was discovered that her son, the heir to the throne, suffered from hemophilia. Alfonso blamed Beatrice for bringing the royal disease to the Spanish royal house and turned bitterly against Ana. Ana returned to England many times during her reign as Queen of Spain to visit her mother, but always without Alfonso and usually without her children. Meanwhile, Beatrice lived at Osborne Cottage and Carisbrook Castle, home of the governor of the Isle of Wight. Victoria had made Beatrice governor of after Henry, uh, Prince Henry had died. In time, Beatrice chose to abandon Osborne College and, against the wishes of her nephew, George V, sold it in 1912. She moved into Carisbrook Castle and kept an apartment at Kensington Palace in London. She had been much involved in collecting material for the Carisbrook Castle Museum, which she opened in 1898. Her presence at court further decreased as she aged and the royal family continued to flourish along uh, Edward, VIII's, or seventh, sorry, Edward VII's family line. Devastated by the death of her favorite son, Maurice, during the First World War in 1914, she began to retire from public life. In response to war with Germany, George V changed the royal family surname from saxe coburg and Gotha to Windsor to distance himself from the, uh, his German origins. Beatrice and her family were forced to renounce their German names. Beatrice's style reverted from HRH Princess Henry of Battenberg to her birth style HRH the Princess Beatrice. Her surname was also anglicized to Mountbatten. Her sons gave up their con uh, courtesy style, Princess, or uh, sorry, Prince of Battenberg. Alexander the eldest became Sir Alexander Mountbatten and was later given the title Marquess of Carisbrook in the Peerage of the United Kingdom. Her younger surviving son Leopold became Lord Leopold Mountbatten and was given the rank of a younger son of a Marquess. Following the war. Beatrice was one of several members of the royal family who became patrons of the Eep League, a society founded for veterans of the Eep Salient and bereaved relatives of those killed in fighting in the Salient. She was herself a bereaved mother, as her son, Prince Maurice of Battenberg, had been killed in action during the First Battle of Eep. Her rare public appearances after her son's death included commemorations of these events, including her laying of wreaths at the Cenotaph in 1930 and 1935 to mark the 10th and 15th anniversaries of the founding of the League. Late Last Years Beatrice continued to correspond with her friends and relatives in her 70s and made rare public appearances, such as when, pushed in a wheelchair, she viewed the wreaths after the death of George V in 1936. She published her last work of translation in 1941, entitled, quote, In Napoleonic Days, unquote. It was the personal diary of Queen Victoria's maternal grandmother, Augusta, Duchess of uh, saxe coburg salfield She corresponded with the publisher, John Murray, who greatly approved of the work. She made her last home at Bantridge Park in West Sussex, which was owned by Queen Mary's brother, Alexander Cambridge, the first Earl of Al Al uh, Athlone and his wife, Beatrice's niece, Princess Alice of Al Albany. There, Beatrice died peacefully in her sleep on the 26th of October, 1944, aged 87. After her funeral service in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, her coffin was placed in the royal vault on the 3rd of November. It was transferred on the 28th of August, 1945, and reunited with that of her husband, Prince Henry, inside St. Mildred's Church, Whippingham, in their joint tomb. Beatrice's final wish, to be buried with her husband, on the island most familiar to, familiar to her, was fulfilled in private service at Whippingham, attended only by her son, the Marquess of Carisbrook, and his wife. Legacy 
Beatrice was the shyest of all Victoria's children. However, because she accompanied Victoria almost everywhere she went, she became uh, among the best known. Despite her shyness, she was an able actor and dancer and was a keen artist and photographer. She was devoted to her children and was concerned when they misbehaved at school. To those who enjoyed her friendship, she was a loyal and had a sense of humor. And as a public figure, she was driven by a strong sense of duty. Music, a passion that was shared by her mother and the prince consort, was something in which Beatrice excelled, and she played the piano to professional standards. Like her mother, she was a devout Christian, fascinated by theology until her death. With her calm temperament and personal warmth, the princess won wide appeal. The demands made on Beatrice during her mother's reign were high. Despite suffering from rheumatism, Beatrice was forced to share her mother's love of cold weather. Beatrice's piano playing suffered as her rheumatism gradually got worse, eliminating an enjoyment in which she excelled. But this did not change her willingness to cater to her mother's needs. Her effort did not go unnoticed by the British public. In 1886, when she agreed to open the show of the Royal Horticultural Society of Southampton, the organizer sent her a proclamation of thanks, expressing their admiration of the affectionate manner in which you have comforted and assisted your widowed mother, our gracious sovereign, the Queen. As a wedding present, Sir Moses uh, Montfiore, a Jewish banker and philanthropist, presented Beatrice and Henry with a silver tea service, inscribed, quote, Many daughters have acted virtuously, but thou excelleth them all, unquote. The Times newspaper, shortly before Beatrice's marriage, wrote, quote, The devotion of your royal highness to our beloved sovereign has won our warmest admiration and our deepest gratitude. May those blessings, which it has hitherto been your consent, aim to uh, confer on others, now be uh, returned in full measure to yourself, unquote. The sentence was, as far as it dared, criticizing the queen's hold over the daughter. Many of the building, buildings with which Beatrice would have been familiar remain today. The main royal residences that she regularly occupied include Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, and Balmoral Castle are all still standing, and Osborne House, her mother's favorite home, is accessible to the public. Her Osborne residences, Osborne and Albert Cottages, remain, although they are now in private ownership after their sale by Beatrice in 1912. Kensington Palace and her death place, Bantridge Park, also remain. At her death, she was the only surviving child of Victoria and Albert, and the future Queen Elizabeth II. Beatrice's great-great-niece was 18 years of age. Titles, Styles, Honors, and Arms 14th of April, 1857 to 23rd of July, 1885 Her Royal Highness the Princess Beatrice 23rd of July, 1885 to 14th of July, 1917 Her Royal Highness Princess Henry of Brattenburg 14th of June, 1917 to 26th of October, 1944. Her Royal Highness the Princess Beatrice. Honours. 9th of January, 1874. Royal Order of Victoria and Albert, First Class. 1st of January, 1878. Order of the Crown of India. 24th of May, 1885. Royal Red Cross. 10th of February, 1904, Royal Family Order of King Edward VII, Second Class. 3rd of June, 1911, Royal Family Order of King George V, Second Class. 1st of January, 1919, Dame Grand Cross and Order of the British Empire. 12th of June, 1926, Dame Grand Cross and Order of the St. John. 11th of May, 1937, Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. Arms. In 1858, Beatrice and the three younger of her sisters were granted use of the royal arms with an anastachin of the shield of Saxony and different, uh, difference by a uh, label argent of the three points. On Beatrice's arms, the outer points bore roses gules and the center a heart gules. In 1917, the anastachin was dropped by the royal warrant from George V. Issue Alexander Mountbatten, Marquess of Carisbrook Birth, 3rd of November, 1886 Death, 23 of February, 1960 
He married 1917 to Irene Dennison, 4th of July 1890 to 16th of July 1956, one daughter, Lady Iris Mountbatten, 1920 to 1982. Victoria Eugenie, Queen of Spain, 24th of October 1887, died 15th of April 1969, married 1906 to King Alfonso VIII of Spain, 17th of May 1886 to 28th of February 1941. Three daughters, one stillborn. Four sons, including Don Juan, Count of Barcelona, 1913 to 1993, Spanish heir apparent, 1933 to 1977, and father of King Juan Carlos of, uh, I of Spain. Lord Leopold Mountbatten, born 21st of May 1889, died 23rd of April 1922, suffered from hemophilia, died unmarried and without issue during a knee operation. Prince Maurice of Battenberg, born 3rd of October 1891, died 27th of October 1914, died of wounds from action during World War I. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.